Hey, what's up everyone? This is Osric with 1320 Automoto. Um, today's video is basically about just uh, disassembling the viscous coupler shaft. Um, I didn't make a video of disassembling the entire thing. That's a completely different um, topic and we'll cover that another day. But basically just what I wanted to share with you as far as the cumbersome process, as far as disassembling these things to rebuild. Um, I'm just making this video uh, mainly because, you know, I've had a few inquiries as far as um, the cost to rebuild a viscous. Um, a lot of people don't really see how invasive it is. It's very time consuming. Um, there's about 79 of these discs that has to be taken apart. And there's also rings in the middle as well. So I'm pretty much just going to be taking all these apart, splitting them up so you can kind of see exactly um, everything that actually has to get done. Okay. So there are two different types of discs in this viscous coupler. Okay, one basically goes into the actual housing. Okay, and it aligns with the edges on the inside, the splines. The other discs, the splines are on the inside and actually goes onto the shaft right here. Now, each time you separate them or when you're actually putting them back together, there is a ring in the middle that you see separates them as well. Um, when also disassembling them, you need to also check for wear or scarring that can appear um, on either side of the discs. So some of them have circles on the inside and some of them have ovals and they need to go one after another with this ring on the inside. So as you can see, I already have two of them out. Okay. And the reason why two of them are already out is because one already goes into the bottom of the shaft prior to you doing anything. And once it's finished and the entire shaft is filled up, the other one sits on top in the shaft as well, into the housing. So one goes into the housing. Sorry, I said that wrong earlier. One goes into the housing, everything else goes onto the shaft. And then another one, the same exact, goes right onto the top of the housing as well. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and uh, just disassemble this real quick. It's not necessarily real quick, but so I have two over here. Now I have one here. And this is a very small uh, ring that you see here that separates them. So what you see here is a shift fork. I'm just going to put them on that shift fork. It's easy for me to actually keep track of them that way. So I split each and every one of them up. Now these things are very hard to separate. Um, sometimes I let them sit for a couple of days just to kind of make it a little bit easier and drain them. All right. If not, you're going to have a very tough time um, separating them. And then even when you do, they're very sticky. It stinks. Um, it just leaves a really big mess that you actually have to clean up. Because like I said, once you're rebuilding these viscous, Every one of them, every one of these discs has to be properly cleaned, thoroughly cleaned um, on both sides before you put them back together. Okay. You can see, you know, some just dirt and corrosion in there. You can pick them up, you know, more than one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, four. Just make sure you are separating them properly. Oh, see, I already had one on the wrong side. Now, this is very important because when you are putting this back together, if you are just going through the motions and you are not paying attention, what's going to happen is you're either going to put two of these or two of these, and then you're going to run into problems later on, or you're going to realize you've been putting them in there, but you've not been properly putting the ring on the inside as well after every two. And if you do that, when you get to the top, and you realize that you have an extra ring, now you're gonna actually have to dig back through the entire viscous to find out exactly where that ring is. I'm gonna go ahead and swap these because to me it just feels easier to put the circles over here. All right, so yeah, like I said, if you don't follow what you're doing properly, okay, you're gonna have to go through it and dig it back up again. You're gonna waste viscous, um, you're gonna waste the fluid, which is very hard to come by these days and it's very expensive 
and then now you're going to be wasting time and wasting your money overall okay and this is a very nasty dirty thing to actually have to do um all over again nobody wants to do this job twice okay Remember, 79 of these, okay, plus these rings that are in the middle. Now, I do have a very good process uh, as far as cleaning them. Um, I'm not sure exactly what other people do. Um, I know exactly how I clean it, um, and it works very well. Um, again, this is just something that is very time consuming that's all if you don't have patience i do not recommend you even attempting this okay the last thing you want to do is to mess up something these parts are discontinued so if you mess something up or you break something up um, it might be a little difficult to actually get replacement parts you're gonna have to reach out to someone who may even have a broken one spare parts laying around um, that might be the only way in which you're going to actually get some of the additional parts that you need all right getting there we still have a long way to go still have a long way to go Now, for the rebuilding process of these, um, definitely takes more than one day to do it right. Um, when we're putting the fluid back in there, let me go ahead and flip this over here. When putting the fluid back um, inside, we do let it sit overnight sometimes just to make sure everything settles. If there's any air bubbles that they actually need to escape up to the top. Okay, so yeah, do some of it, half of it. Um, let it sit, come back to it the next day, uh, just make sure everything is okay, and then continue to pick up where you left off, and um, kind of repeat that process again until you are finished, okay? Uh, we are slowly coming up to the end of this here. Oh, come on. Okay. Now, even though this is all being um, split and separated, once I do clean everything, then I will put it back together before I install it back into the um, viscous coupler housing. Okay, and the last one, perfect. Okay, so here it is, everything split up. Every single one of these has to be clean. Every single one of these has to be clean, dried, inspected. Uh, the shaft also has to be cleaned and inspected. And um, to you, a lot of this like little rust hair, a lot of that has to actually get taken care of. Once it all gets taken care of, it'll be good to go to reassemble back as well. Um, I'll make another video showing some of the reassemble process. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. So. As you can see, it's a very time consuming process. Um, I just kind of wanted to share that with you just to give some people an insight as far as what has to get done in order to rebuild these uh, viscous couplers. All right, thank you very much. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you very much, that's it.